Most of the Yucatan is a hard limestone with the highest elevation 656 feet above sea level. Rainwater on its return to the sea has broken open gaps in the subsurface, forming cavities, cenotes, and an extensive network of underground rivers. A cenote is a natural pit or sinkhole resulting from the collapse of limestone bedrock that exposes groundwater underneath. Cenotes are natural wells found in the jungles of the Yucatan Peninsula, a large region of porous limestone and underground rivers. The term derives from a word used by the lowland Yucatec Maya, Tsonat, to refer to any location with accessible groundwater. Cenotes are formed from a geomorphologic process where time and space, the porosity and rock feature, the weather, temperature, and mixture of fresh and salt water all play a part in forming these structures. Cenotes water is often very clear derived from rainwater filtering slowly through the ground and therefore contains very little suspended particulate matter. They're usually filled with turquoise and green crystalline water. The groundwater flow rate within a cenote may be very slow. In many cases, cenotes are areas where sections of cave roof have collapsed, revealing an underlying cave system. Cenotes around the world attract cave divers who have documented extensive flooded cave systems through them, some of which have been explored for lengths of 62 miles. The formation process consists of three phases, dissolution, collapse, and construction. Cenotes are formed by dissolution of rock and the resulting subsurface void, which may or may not be linked to an active cave system and the subsequent structural collapse of the rock ceiling above the void. Rock that falls into the water below is slowly removed by further dissolution, creating space for more collapsed blocks. The rate of collapse increases during periods when the water table is below the ceiling of the void, since the rock ceiling is no longer buoyantly supported by water in the void. Cenotes may fully collapse creating an open water pool or partially collapsed with some portion of a rock overhanging above the water. The stereotypical cenotes often resemble small circular ponds, measuring some tens of meters in diameter with sheer drops at the edges. The cenotes in caves of the Yucatan have origins from a cataclysmic event associated with the extinction of the dinosaurs as a result of the Earth being hit by a large asteroid. The Chicxulub Crater is a prehistoric impact crater buried underneath the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico and created the geological structures that resulted in the vast network of caves and cenotes in the Yucatan. Its center is located near the town of Chicxulub, after which the crater is named. The crater is more than 110 miles in diameter and 12 miles in depth making the feature one of the largest confirmed impact structures on Earth. The age of the rocks marked by the impact shows that this impact structure dates from roughly 66 million years ago, the end of the Cretaceous period. The impact associated with the crater is thus implicated in the Cretaceous Paleogene extinction event. A long-term effect of the impact was the creation of the sedimentary basin which ultimately produced favorable conditions for human settlement in a region where surface water is scarce. There is a ring of cenotes bordering the Chicxulub crater, providing the only physical evidence of the impact. When the cenotes and caves are mapped, it becomes clear they form a distinctive circular course through the jungle and mark out the rim of a giant crater. The Yucatan Peninsula contains a vast aquifer system. The infiltrating rainwater floats on top of higher density saline water, intruding from the coastal margins. The whole aquifer is therefore one that is landlocked but connected to an ocean. Where a cenote or the flooded cave to which it is an opening provides deep enough access into the aquifer, the interface between the fresh and saline water may be reached. The density interface between the fresh and saline waters is a halocline, 
which means a sharp change in salt concentration over a small change in depth. The mixing of the fresh and saline water results in a blurry swirling effect caused by refraction between the different densities of fresh and saline waters. The depth of the halocline is a function of several factors, climate and specifically how much meteoric water recharges an aquifer, hydraulic conductivity of the host rock, distribution and connectivity of existing cave systems, and how effective these are at draining water to the coast and the distance from the coast. In general, the halocline is deeper further from the coast. The Yucatan Peninsula has almost no rivers and only a few lakes and those are often marshy. The widely distributed cenotes are the only perennial source of potable water and have long been the principal sources of water in much of the Yucatan Peninsula. The first Mayan settlements occupied the highlands around 2500 BC. Cenotes were a fresh water supply source for the Mayas for hundreds of years. Even today, numerous towns take advantage of the fresh water that comes from cenotes and the underground rivers. Settlers established themselves at or near these natural wells. Major Maya settlements required access to adequate water supplies and therefore cities, including the famous Chichen Itza, were built around these natural wells. Some cenotes, like the sacred cenote in Chichen Itza, played an important role in Maya rites. For the Maya, the cenotes and caves were gateways to the world of the dead, while at the same time being associated with fertility. Mythology surrounding the underworld with cenotes and caves believed to be access to the kingdom of darkness inhabited by the gods who gave life and also took it away. Believing that these pools were gateways to the afterlife, the Maya sometimes threw valuable items into them. The discovery of golden sacrificial artifacts in some cenotes led to the archaeological exploration of most cenotes in the first part of the 20th century. Edward Herbert Thompson, an American diplomat who had bought the Chichen Itza site, began dredging the sacred cenote there in 1904. He discovered human skeletons and sacrificial objects confirming a local legend, the cult of the cenote, involving human sacrifice to the rain god Chalk by ritual casting of victims and objects into the cenotes. Since ancient times, the caves and cenotes of the Yucatan served as refuge for the Mayans from natural disasters and armed fighting. During the Mayan social struggle of the 19th century in the Yucatan Peninsula, known as the Caste War, cenotes and caves were used as shelters by Mayan rebels for the storage of their weapons and protection. While the best known cenotes are large open water pools, measuring tens of meters in diameter, such as those at Chichen Itza. The greatest number of cenotes are smaller, sheltered sites and do not necessarily have any surface exposed water. Not all cenotes look like a hole in the ground, with many looking like a pond. The tunnels are formed by water rushing through and dissolving the soft limestone. Many of these caves have stalactites hanging from the ceiling resulting from mineral deposits transported by the water that filters through the rocks. Stalactites begin to form with a single drop of water creating a narrow and fragile tube on the inside. Their formation can take thousands of years and there are an infinite number of styles and shapes. Stalactites can only form in a dry cave. During the last ice age, water levels were lower and many of the current cenotes and caves were dry, and that is when the stalactites formed. When it rains, the water percolated through the limestone, and during the process, dissolved some of the limestone and carried it away. The water then dripped from the roof of the cave, and over thousands of years, limestone was slowly deposited and formed the icicle-shaped stalactite. The same water drops that fall from the tip of the stalactite deposits lime on the ground creating a stalagmite over time. A variety of shapes result from factors such as rhythm of the drop and the height of the fall. When both stalactite and stalagmite 
are provided enough time to grow, and under the right conditions, they can join together and form a column that can measure up to several meters tall. At the end of the ice age, the sea levels rose, and this raised the ground level table of the waters of the Yucatan. Many of the subterranean caverns filled with water. In 1936, a simple morphometry-based classification system for cenotes was presented. Cenotes cantaro, jug, or pit cenotes are those with a surface connection narrower than the diameter of the water body. Cenotes cylindricos, cylinder cenotes, are those with strictly vertical walls. Cenotes aguadas, basin cenotes, are those with shallow water basins, and grutas, cave cenotes, are those having horizontal entrance with dry sections. The classification scheme was based on morphometric observations above the water table, and therefore incompletely reflects the process by which the cenotes formed and the inherent hydrochemical relationship with the underlying flooded cave networks. Before scuba diving in a cenote, it is important to understand the limitations and risks. There are stark differences between scuba diving in the open ocean and in a cave which has no direct access to the surface. Divers should be adequately certified, have the correct equipment, and be accompanied by a dive master certified for cave diving and knows the cenote to be explored in detail. The floor of a cenote is covered in fine silt. It is important for divers to maintain their buoyancy since any sudden movement can cause sediment to rise and result in a quick whiteout and diver disorientation or cause damage to the fragile stalactites and stalagmites. These formations take thousands of years to form, but a careless fin kick can destroy these structures. Always follow the established guidelines for cave diving and maintain a maximum distance of 200 feet from an exit for breathing and in sight of a source of natural light. If you venture into a cenote to the point you can no longer see any natural light, you are now cave diving and this is a more dangerous activity. Many of the cenotes are marked with stop signs warning the explorer to go no further. Many people have become lost and drowned in these vast systems. Cave diving is the reason for many diving related deaths. Cave diving should never be performed alone and always hire an expert guide from a local dive operation. Diving and filming cenotes is an amazing experience. The magnificent colors change as the sun sets into different angles. The richness and tone of the water can change depending on the position of a camcorder to the angle of the sun. The interaction of water and light can create a truly remarkable viewing and filming experience. The mystic experience of diving in total darkness and no natural light creates a feeling of excitement and fear at the same time. From the sailfish and whale sharks off Isla Cantoy to the north, to the Mayan ruins and cenotes centered around Tulum, to the magical reefs of Cozumel, Mexico, this unique area presents a host of different diving experiences for all genders, ages, and experience. Playa del Carmen and its fun Fifth Avenue corridor of great nightlife, shops, and restaurants allows for a centralized launch point to experience all of the scuba diving and water sport activities available in the Riviera Maya and the Mesoamerican Barrier Reef.